Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So last week we talked about abstraction and it engages me and interests me because it's relevant to where I'm trying to go in my own work. And we described abstraction from the root pulling away and its relationship to subtract and simplification. So the thing is, it's not always that abstraction goes to simplification. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. In Monet's case, mid-century, mid-career painting, you can see he's pushing abstraction. Look at how complex this is. It may have started as a plein air painting, but there's layers and layers and layers of paint here to build up that surface. And Seurat, a Sunday on Le Grand Jatte, it's a very complex scene, it's true, and it's very simplified forms, but if you go in and look closely, you can see that there's an amazing complexity the way that pointillist style works, sort of the way a magazine uh, is printed today. So two weeks ago I was in Santa Barbara painting and I took this photograph. It was actually the thing that I wanted to paint. And it's a scene that my friend Marcia Burtz painted a number of times. I sort of emailed her and said, I sort of consider it, I, you know, you own it. But she said, no, no, it's not mine. And here's the drawing I did when I got home from the photo. This is kind of what I had in mind. And you can see that I expanded it a little bit more on the right and then expanded it even more on the right to get a sort of a big shape on the right, contrasting with the smaller one on the left. Uh, and when it's gridded, you can see that there's a very strong vertical on that third, which was just sort of coincidental. I mean, it just felt right and that's where it ended up. And the structure is sort of like this. What I love about this, if you think of the horizon line, say across here, of the powerful sort of horizontals and verticals leading us right into here. So with sort of armed with that really good structure, what I decided to do is I was going to paint this from the drawing. I put the photo aside so I have less information but more abstraction. So I'll show you how it goes. So here's this cobalt blue and white and I'm putting it on, brushing it into the ground that I've got a fairly dark ground there that'll just kind of be like an earth tone there. I'm just kind of blending it. You see the shapes, even though I'm painting simple shapes, I'm pretty clear, careful because this is all about the edges of this whole shape. The shape that I'm creating, I'm looking over at my drawing as I go here. And then it, when I come over here, then it's kind of a bigger shape and I'm kind of looser because that whole thing is just one big shape. A little bit of shadow at the bottom, blend it up into there, and then that big dark shape on the side. But just shapes, you know, keeping it very simple. And my intention was to keep it simple as I could, and I'll show you. If, then, you know, the grass is below that. Just, you know, big brush. Then I got some alizarin in there, a little darker to kind of pull us down that end. Good little dark there to pull it round. And that's sort of drawing the bottom edge with the brush. I'll fill in above it, but that's sort of drawing the shape I want with that. And here I'm doing the reflections. And uh, they're pretty just big shapes of the reflections that, you know, you see that I'll just go to the other side here. It's just going to be a big, you could do it with a house painting brush. Well, I guess I am using a house painting brush, aren't I? and then softening it because of the shift down like that. But the, the, the reflections are very, very simple. Um, just a few places where there's necessary shifts that I uh, make sure that we see it as reflection. And then that's why I've got the ground in there because now we're getting close to the same value. And there's that nice hit of light on that, um, I guess, chalk or something there. And then these different values here of the wet sand, the dry sand, and then the top of the sand where it's it's gritty, it's dirty. And then again, just shifting the colors down here. But then you just see that it's sort of getting that lining up and that lining up with what's above it. And then getting a good edge so that we get that reflection. One long, thin line just to separate land from estuary. And then here's what I want you to look at. Just look at that area. Well, maybe you need to stop it a little longer than I had, but I just had overpainted that and I just figured I'm scraping the whole thing away. And then just a few, I'd learned a lot from painting it. And now I just realized I wanted a few simple marks to do the whole thing. I had just completely overpainted it. 
And then there's the finished painting. And, you know, the sim I did the whole thing from the drawing, thinking in terms of the two big masses, the big one on the right, the smaller one on the left, and everything kind of bringing us to the, the gap between those big masses of trees. I like the way this painting turned out. The big shapes carry it. But the truth is, I really took it further than I wanted to. And so I put another canvas up and painted it again, simpler. And I'll show you that process next week and we can look into when is a painting finished. So that's for next week. Now, the other thing is Mastering Composition, which has now sold 50,000 copies, uh, is just back from a slow boat from China, literally. And uh, it's been republished by Penguin Random House. And so that's available on Amazon. There's a link down below, both here on YouTube and in the email. And Creative Authenticity, which I wrote about 15 years ago, and that sold about 15,000 copies just on word of mouth. And it's more about the process of being an artist, the interior process, and less about the actual mechanics. So both of those are available uh, in the links down below. So listen, I hope you have a fantastic week. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.